Have you ever sat out at night, looked up at all those stars, and pondered perhaps humanity's biggest philosophical question? What is the difference between Portra 400 and Fuji Pro 400H? Well, today we're going to find out. Today's episode is sponsored by The Dark Room. All the roles in today's video were developed and scanned by The Dark Room. Many philosophers over the ages have asked the big question, what is the actual difference between Portra 400 and Fuji Pro 400H? Well, hopefully today we're going to arrive at a conclusive finding by doing a one-to-one -one comparison the only way that it should be done, scientifically. Because, as my science professor always told me, you're failing this class and you're going to need to take summer school. So to get started, I loaded up one of my Hasselblad backs with a fresh roll of Kodak Portra 400, and the other back with a fresh, not expired, roll of Fuji Pro 400H that I pulled from my own dwindling supply. Fuji Pro 400H is a unique film stock because it was widely applauded by photographers all over the planet, until Fuji said, f**k all of you, and discontinued it. Which is a good and a bad thing. Bad because it's hard to find and it's starting to get expensive. Good because I finally realized that Fuji discontinuing a film stock is the only way that I can feel anything anymore. Both film stocks are Proline color negative films. Pro 400H is known for producing vibrant Fuji greens, and Kodak Portra 400 is known for its warmer tones. So some things that we're going to keep an eye out for in the test are differences in color, grain, latitude, and how well each film stock performs in under and over exposure. In order to keep the test consistent, I used the exact same settings across the board, both in the camera while I was shooting and in Lightroom with Negative Lab Pro. In fact, I used the lab standard preset and made no further adjustments to either one so that they could be put through the exact same process for scrutiny. Anyway, Monica and Baxter headed to a nearby park. I was also there. Quick, necessary disclaimer, these are sh**ty test photos, not artistic masterpieces. They're more likely to be found hanging in the loo than the Louvre. <laughs> to start off, I shot a color chart at box speed located in the shade to see what exactly the two stocks do with indirect light. Turns out, not a huge difference in the shade. Portrait definitely renders the greens a little more pleasingly and seems to feature a stronger color rendition across the board. The skin tones in the portrait shots are also more vibrant and fleshy in my opinion, even though the word fleshy is gross. But what about real world scenarios? Unless of course all you do is shoot color charts with film, in which case you're probably also a serial killer. Here's a shot of Monica and Baxter in the park at sunset, again in the shade. You might notice that the Fuji Pro 400H is a lot cooler in temperature and flatter, though both were rated at box speed and shot with the exact same settings. Portra 400 seems to be warmer and renders colors, like skin tones, more pleasingly at box speed. This is something I found consistent across the stocks. It seems Fuji Pro 400H craves a bit more light. Here's the same shot of a tree, and if you look closely, you can tell the shadows go a bit grainier and harsher on the Fuji Pro 400H compared to the Portra 400. But what about how each stock performs in direct sunlight? Here's a comparison of the same color charts blasted with warm sunlight. This is where I think the Fuji Pro 400H was stronger. The colors are more saturated than the Portra 400 by quite a bit, especially the reds, oranges, knees, and toes. The Portra 400 colors go a bit more pastel, and the Fuji Pro 400H displays a more greenish cast and is grainier in the shadows. But what do these two film stocks look like when they're overexposed? Overexposing these two film stocks is very hip right now for wedding and engagement photography. These were taken at one stop overexposed. Based on first impressions, it seems like the pinks and the reds in Pro 400H still pop quite a bit compared to Portra 400. So if you're taking a picture of herpes, well, now you know which film stock to use. Looking at the difference between box speed and one stop over on 400H, the first thing I noticed is that the grain in the shadows on 400H disappears almost entirely just by overexposing one stop. The yellows get toned down a bit and a slight haze of magenta is introduced into the highlights. Looking at Portra 400, the colors become much more vibrant, and the magenta cast in the shadows at box speed seems to kind of just go away. Here's
Here's another photo of Monica and Baxter backlit by the sun, exposed at box speed, metered for Monica's face. Again, we see the same things consistent with before, Baxter being a good boy, more grain in the Fuji Pro 400 h shot, and a warmer, arguably more pleasing, cast on the Portra 400. In this shot that's one stop overexposed, the Fuji Pro 400H retains more contrast, greener greens, and if you look closely, Baxter sees a squirrel. Taking things the other direction with two stops underexposed, not only do the photos look like sh but we can effectively see the characteristics of each film stock. The Portra 400 is significantly warmer and the Pro 400H is significantly grainier. Furthermore, I thought it might be kind of interesting to get some super scans done from the darkroom to kind of compare what each film stock might look like if you were to go with a lab versus, you know, flying solo. <laughs> So here's a shot of the basketball court at sunset, exposed at box speed. We can see things here that have been pretty consistent throughout this comparison, like more contrast in the Portra, grainy shadows in the 400H, and the fact that this guy still can't land a three-pointer. After I went down there to give him a dunking tutorial, I headed home to prepare for one final night photo to round out the tests. In this case, I'd actually say the Fuji Pro 400H was more color accurate overall, though more grainy as well. The Portra 400 really tried to flex its warmth all over the image, and I don't know if it really works all that well. Anyway, that's it. My closing statement is both of these film stocks probably need more light than they let on at 400 ISO. With Fuji 400H, I think that was definitely the case as we saw more grain in the shadows. Portra 400 has this natural contrast at box speed that is really, really nice, but gotta say, Pro 400H just looks incredible when overexposed one or two stops in daylight situations, especially when it dials its legendary Fuji greens. So what are your thoughts on these two film stocks? Do you shoot either one in different situations? Or do you just say f both of them because they're way too mainstream? Are you sad that Fuji no longer makes Pro 400H or are you not surprised? After all, change is the only constant is Fujifilm's actual business slogan. Do you shoot one stock more than other in certain situations? And if you're a wedding photographer, why is Fuji Pro 400H the gold standard? Can we transition the wedding film stock of choice to be Lomo Metropolis maybe? so that everyone looks dead on their big day. All right, well, that's it. Um, leave a suggestion if there's two other film stocks you want me to compare. Peace.